Hi, this is Ina Langerman from Violina.Live, helping you along your musical journey. This video is for those of you who are struggling with three octave scales on the violin, or if you are planning to tackle Carl Flesch's or Galamian scale system for the first time and feeling like you're about to climb Mount Everest on that fingerboard and you're not sure how to progress, this one's for you. Before you add three octave scales to your regular practice, there are certain prerequisites that need to be met. First of all, you should already be familiar with third and fifth positions on the instrument. That means not only being able to play in those positions across the strings, but also being able to shift to and from. So for example, being able to go from first to third position and then from third to fifth. And to become familiar with the different finger patterns and hand shapes that this involves in various keys. A great resource to practice these is to get Whistler's book called Introducing the Positions, Volume 1, which includes positions three and five in different keys, and it includes shifting exercises along with short etudes. There's also volume two of this series, which covers positions two, four, six, and seven. But to get started on three active scales, three and five, those you wanna get started with first. The next prerequisite to playing three octave scales is to be already familiar with a good amount of two octave scales on the instrument, especially those involving shifting. For this, I usually recommend students to practice scales and arpeggios from Barbara Barber's book called Scales for Young Violinists. And of course, there's a viola version just like this as well for, for those of you playing viola. One of the reasons I really like this book is because it actually isolates shifts that need to be practiced for each of the keys on a separate page. See, there's a whole uh, separate page just with shifts in all the different keys. And learning scales like F major in two octaves will already have you playing up to fifth position, which is what we need in order to play our first three octave scale G major. Of course, for viola, that would translate to B flat major in two octaves, get you up to fifth position so you can play C major three octave scales. Another skill we need for three octave scales is understanding how to get into higher positions on the fingerboard with regards to two things, the thumb path and also how the arm moves to the right as we climb up the fingerboard. So notice that the arm has to swing from the shoulder to the right. At the same time, when the thumb goes in here for fifth and higher positions. Now there is a great exercise from Paul Rowland's action studies, which is called the shuttle. And it involves to train the hand to easily glide between low, middle, and high positions on the instrument. To make it the most effective, what we wanna do is pluck with our pinky as we do that. and also try it on different strings. So the reason we pluck with the pinky, it makes it the most effective because it actually aligns all the fingers on the fingerboard. It ensures that the fingers will reach in wh whichever position you end up as you start playing these three active scales, especially when you start adding acceleration. By the way, if you're getting any value from this video so far, please give this video a thumbs up down below to help support this channel and do consider subscribing and sharing with a friend. Carl Flesch and Galamian scales include the practice of different rhythms, different bow strokes and acceleration, which is so important for our development on the instrument. Of course, you can start already applying all of these in the two octave scales and I actually strongly recommend that you do so. A common struggle for many players of all levels is the practice of acceleration. And of course, it's the kind of practice that you need to show up for day after day, year after year, over the course of a long term and something that we continue practicing throughout our lives. To be successful in acceleration, we need to look at our overall foundation, starting with the setup of the instrument. Um, with regards to proper technique, you wanna check that your left hand fingers are lifting and dropping from the bass knuckles, that's really important, and that they are aligned over the string with a consistent shape based on the whole steps and half steps that are needed for whatever scale you're doing, whichever part of the scale you're 
plane also i very strongly recommend that you do um trill exercises from one of simon fisher's books my favorite is his book called warming up it's a very small book very effective uh, because practicing trill studies will train the fingers to play the scales and passages from repertoire quicker and it will activate the correct muscles and uh, set up a good muscle memory for when you have to play it quicker also really really important when you're practicing slowly and this will help you with the acceleration in order to be successful when you're practicing a scale slowly it's so important that you are always anticipating with the left hand so what do i mean by that when i'm playing one note the next finger is getting ready and so on so sometimes what i see in some students which is a problem when they're playing scales slowly is this so as you can see already the intonation got worse and the fingers went down at the last possible second this will not help you when you have to play quicker so very important so not like this don't play like that so watch again like this anticipate so so important to anticipate when we practice slowly and then later when you start adding slurs again not like this no like this so that's going to set you up for success when you have to play it quicker finally here is a great exercise to help you get over tempo hurdles in some of these scales to isolate a small chunk of notes from a scale so maybe like four or five notes let's say you're playing g major scale and you get up to the first shift there all right here we have a shift so let's say this shift is slowing you down when you're practicing acceleration so what you can do is isolate just these four notes and practice them back and forth or you can even just isolate the shift on its own the idea is to um, create one motion out of these notes So this is actually going to help you to get over some of the trouble spots like shifts and also string crossings that's another one um, then what you do next is you start adding notes either to um, after this chunk or before in this case I'll add some after I'm also going to now add a note before this chunk I'll do six now so the idea is for it to feel like one motion instead of making a special event out of the shift for example so it's very helpful um, also in the highest positions so I would isolate the last five notes and also especially um, the downward shifts those are very tough
And you can see that the string crossing gave me a little bit trouble here. So I had to make sure that my pinky was um, anticipating the same way I showed you to anticipate when practicing slowly. So because I, when I practice slowly, I anticipate the skill was so important right now for me when I was doing the descending shift. If I wasn't doing that in a slow practice, it would not translate right now. Now I realize that I haven't talked at all about intonation in this video. There is so much more to scales than learning how to play in tune. Scales are the foundation of music and we use it to develop things like our sound production, coordination, dexterity, different bow strokes, dynamics, and so many more things. So I'll probably make a video on intonation and scales at some point, but until then, check out this video over here that I made a while back about tuning systems. Also, if you have not already done so, check out my bi-monthly newsletter in the description below. It's completely free and you'll get content in both video and written form and the access to reach me directly. Until next time, happy practicing!